In this video, me and Adam's gonna be loading up in the minivan and going to a fish farm to pick up some rare paddlefish to actually stock in our pond. We're also gonna be meeting up with our buddy Chase, Fish King, who's gonna be showing us his indoor aquarium, and he said he's even got a special surprise for us at the end. Should be pretty epic, but let's get started. You know, I'll be honest with you, man. I've not been up this early since probably high school. <laughs> well, so I'm just sitting here driving, and Adam starts pulling stuff out of his bag. You never know what's gonna happen in these long trips. You never know when you're gonna need a machete. What else you got? First aid kit. Box of matches. Walkie talkie so we can never be separated. How many do you have two or just one? I've got two. Oh. Pull out that other blade. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> what do you plan on doing? We're going to pick up fish. You never know. Is it? Got paracord here just in case extra maybe over prepared maybe not we'll find out i got lint for fire starter no you don't i do <laughs> oh some extra paracord sharpening blade that's all i've got but you never know i've got quentin still in here somewhere but i don't know where it is since he's walking talking he's part. can you hear me i think we're good <laughs> Now, I need to keep this one, you need to keep that one. Yep, at all times. On our drive up here, in case the minivan splits in half, we get separated. <laughs> oh, here we go. Is that flint or steel? I don't know. Sounds like to me, to pick up these fish, Adam's got us covered for no matter what happens. It's actually an Ozark trail kit on Walmart. The bag came with it. All right, we got a little bit longer, and then we'll be there. All right, boys, I think we have arrived at the fish farm. Take a look. What do you, oh, uh, maybe that's it. Maybe not. Uh oh, that might be our guy right here. Fish for sale. This might be our guy right here. He's waving. I think that's our guy. I think that's Fish King. Woo! All right, guys. This is quite the perfect fish haul mobile, honestly. What you got in the back there? You got that Bible and stuff? Yeah, let's see what we got. Yeah. Oh, heck we yeah. got that. An igloo converted into a live wheel. It's got air on that side. And then I got that basket. Dude, this is the setup. Way. This is going to be perfect. Dude, look how much space you got in the back. You can do all, you can you can put a shark in there. You can put an Xbox back there, a whole TV, you can put anything you want. That's freaking sweet. Hidden game room, maybe. Um, people will tell y'all more about this actual place. It's got a pretty cool history. Uh, I was a professor at Kentucky State University for 30 years, and for the last 10 years, I was going around looking at different old sewer plants that were decommissioned, not being used, and we converted three of them into aquaculture. A little place on the side of the road here in Kentucky is one of the only farms left in the entire United States, so. That's Pretty wild. Cool we have it here. Even on lease, and I put probably about 50,000 in this place. So these tanks are ones that we redid. These used to be what they call biofilters. What do you have in here right now? Koi uh, and largemouth bass. Oh, okay. This is a 165,000 gallon tank over here. This tank was built in 1935, so it didn't hold water when we came here. We had to put a liner in it. And about a year ago, me and Steve actually got inside this pond, and I think there was like about, there's about 5,000 two to three footers in here. <laughs> and we were in there with these giant nets, catching them all out, and they were banging us in the side. I think it was like March. So this is uh, where I usually keep like bluegill in the springtime so I can sell them in these different tanks. Here's some paddlefish. Okay. I've there. never seen a paddlefish before. Never. Never in person. Catch, it. catch one out of here. They're yeah. so fast. Yeah. <laughs> in the water. Ah. There, he's gonna catch one 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 right there we go. Oh, there's one right there. Oh, wow. See that long spoonbill there? Yeah. Probably one of the coolest looking North American fish. Why, Very... do, they, why do they have that spoonbill? Is it something they need? Yeah, it's a, it's a way that they can detect obstacles and food in the water. They have these little electroreceptors, just like sharks. And they actually can detect low magnetic fields in the water. And so they have a real teeny eye. You can just barely see their eye. Okay. So that's like use like an antenna almost. Wow. In the water. So they, they live in the river where it's real muddy. And oh, yeah. You can't hardly see. So. Uh, so it almost looks like a shark from behind here. You can see the way the dorsal fin's way here in the back. And then the tail is longer on the top than on the bottom. So at one time they called this a freshwater shark back in the 1700s hmm. and then they finally identified it as a separate species. But it is a filter feeder, it has a really pretty large mouth 
Yeah. And then they have real long gill rakers. Uh huh. See the gill rakers there? Yeah. That that helps sieve out the zooplankton from the water. So that's uh, just like a baleen whale that takes krill out of the ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, they take zooplankton out of the water. And how big will these guys get? Uh, well over 100 pounds. Wow. They usually grow about five pounds a year. So 20 years or so, you get 100 pounds. It all depends how much food's available. And, mm. uh, so other things are important. What's the, what's the last span? Um, you know, up north where it's colder, it's kind of like deer or larger up north and they live longer because it's cold and it takes longer for them to mature. But paddlefish, you're looking at about 40, maybe 50 years, they believe. Oh gosh. So, Customers over the last few years, and some of their fish are pushing 50 to 100 pounds plus. So it's pretty cool um, to see them thrive in ponds. There's not a ton of information out there about keeping paddlefish in ponds. I mean, they do really well here in Kentucky. Um, they're also a native species here. I think they're native in over 25 different states. Uh, and so, I mean, you can have them in your backyard pond, and you can freaking have a river monster in there, which is pretty dang cool if you like to fish. So yeah, I just so happen to have a book that I wrote that was for 30 years of our research. So they eat a oh. floating feed that's made oh. for trout. And so if I have a fish feeder, is it likely that these will eventually start feeding on it? Oh or? yeah. Oh, okay. They train, they train very Oh, easily. that's really cool. Yeah. To be out in a pond with a fish feeder and oh. see a paddlefish come up. Well, imagine when it gets 100 pounds and that thing comes up, I mean, you're gonna have a river monster in the pond. This is the feed I use on the paddlefish. Yeah, but we'll see. Dude, what do you think about this? It's pretty neat. Is this neat. the ultimate pool pond? I think so. They've got us beat by a lot. They know what they're doing. I got a fun sickle pool, but we're trying. Oh, look at that Oh, oh yeah. Dude, look at them chunky fellas. Those are, those that. are bad. Look at this thing. Look at that belly on there. He's so Heck. tall. Woo! I've never been to a fish farm before. Yeah, this is a legit fish farm. Yeah. Uh, this ain't no KG's pool pond. No, these ain't minners we got out of the creek. These ain't minners either. You ready? Yes, sir. Here we go. Keep that up. Wow. Yeah, we got a few. And so whenever it comes time to catch them, this is what you usually do? This is what I do. And I usually do it by myself. What a weird so thing. Bigger one. Yeah, that's a good one too. Look what a weird fish. Yeah. Are they all generally the same color? Most river fish you catch are real light gray. This is gonna be so crazy. Future river monsters. You know, I grew up on the show River Monsters, probably like you all, right? Yeah. And this is like a dream, man. Own one of these fish was, was something on my bucket list. Right after they hatch, I have too many in there to really see real well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this is when they first start to eat, so they're a little bigger. Yeah. Second week, you can see it looks like a little shark at that point. You see yeah. the little paddle just starting to come out. It's the third week. Bigger and bigger. Starting to look like a paddlefish now. Yep. And <laughs> there a little you. bit too big for the jar, but there's uh, after four weeks. And a lot of people think with these paddlefish, just because they kind of look scary, especially when they're that big, that they're like gonna, you know, eat everything in your pond, and that's like the exact opposite. They kind of remind me of a whale shark. Like they're just a gentle giant yeah. uh, that's just, you know, not gonna bother anything. I kept them with koi for years, bass, bluegill, never a single issue. What I do is I put two and a half gallons of water in, uh, and then we fill it up with oxygen after that. Got it. Nice. Professional. He's done this before. Oh, he swam out. Fast. He's coming back. I want more. And then, KG, I think next year we're actually talking about getting into some other things like some sturgeon, maybe, some bowfin. Oh, really? Yeah. Steve? You know anybody catch bowfin? I can't buy them if they're like a recreational fisherman, they can give them to me. But only commercial fishermen can sell fish. You know that? Mm. Yeah. 
I like to tell people the rules because a lot of people don't know the rules. Yeah. And then you're, they don't tell you the rules after you're caught. Yeah. <laughs> Once you're in jail, then you learn the rules. Okay, so so what you do is you uh, do like an accordion here, and then you push all of the air out that you can down to the water, and you stick your oxygen hose in, and then you turn your tank on. So this is about as pure oxygen as you can get. It is, it's 100%. If you fill up the atmosphere around it, then it diffuses into the water. So if you open that bag and check the water, it should be about 100%. It's good usually for 24 hours. When so you go to put these in the pond, do they need to accumulate to the water temperature? Or? Yes. So usually you just float the bag in the pond and it will turn the you know, temperature to be similar. All right guys, so the paddlefish, we got them loaded up pretty good. However, we're actually now we're actually going over to chase the place where he keeps his fish. So it's completely different. This was the fish farm. Now we're going over here. Now we're going over to chase his like, fish his pets his pet fish and they're pretty epic and that's where the surprise is supposed to be adam what you thought about the day so far you know i don't think i'm gonna need my machete or nothing he's a pretty good guy that was really cool especially that it used to be an old like waste water treatment plant i like the kois the koi fish they're very colorful and those are sweet too those are super cool i may have to come back and get like a koi because I did tell him. At the him, stop sign, turn right. I did. I did tell him about some grass that I seen growing. He was like, he's got some stuff that might help us. So maybe next spring we may have to hit him up for some koi. Cool. Yeah. Now we get to go find a surprise. He said it's a one in like ten thousand fish. Plus he's got a big old fish in, in a three tank. Quarters of a mile. Plus he's got a big old fish in a tank. It's a giant catfish that we're gonna get to look at too. So far the fish are doing at the good. Next stop sign. Oh my god. All right, right. We'll catch you guys when we get there. All right, guys. So where we at? We're at the Fish King Warehouse right now, here in Lexington, Kentucky. Here's what we're gonna do. Since the paddlefish are in the minivan and they are currently being held hostage, we have been advised to not turn the minivan off so it don't get too hot. So we're just gonna leave the whip out here rattling away and hope that no one takes it. And if they do, they won't go far. <laughs> you need to put a dual exhaust on that thing. <laughs> you thing coming from a mile away. Definitely, ain't, definitely isn't stealthy, that's for sure, but. No, no, but it covers ground quick. There is stuff everywhere. Um, it's a mess, but this place used to be filled with even more stuff. Um, and we put this giant fish room here uh, because the fish are very sensitive to the temperature and the humidity and stuff. So we had to build a building that can pretty much withstand all these fish. So it's almost like a lab, if that makes sense, that we built. Um, and this room was never here before. So it's got its own AC, it's got its own dehumidifier, all that kind of stuff. This um, is wild. Yeah, I mean, it took us two years to build this thing, and there's probably been over 100 people that it took to complete the room. So it's been a lot of work. It definitely taken a lot of years off my life. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it's kind of a little cool man cave. So let's go inside and check it out. Yeah, dude. Let's go. Oh, there's Shamu. Look at that thing. Tell oh, me that's not Shamu. Where do you even get that? Dude, so that, tell us about this. Yeah, that is freaking Shamu. Um, so I waited three long years to get this fish, and there's actually been a ton of fish in this tank over the years. Um, unfortunately though, keeping fish in a big tank like this isn't always the easiest things. Um, I've had leaks, power outages, a ton of crazy stuff happened to me, and unfortunately it cost me a lot of my fish over the years. Um, now I put in a lot of different things to kind of keep that from happening, but still, I mean, we're keeping giant animals. Like look at this catfish. That thing is like 70 pounds. It's probably about 30 years old right now. It's um, a big blue, right? Big old blue catfish. So I waited three years to get this thing, like I said. Oh, wow. And, oh, look at the parasite. So I'm treating it right now. Look at the little parasite, do you see that? That's the craziest thing I've ever seen. It's moving. Yeah, dude. Imagine eating that. <laughs> get up on your belly. How many feet is this? So I measured it out the other day. It's about four feet long and it'll actually get bigger. So with it being about 60 to 70 pounds, they can get over a hundred pounds. So ideally my goal was to get one over a hundred pounds, uh, but those things cost about $5,000. And I said, heck no. Cause if you think of a hundred pound fish, that's about as big as they get. And yeah. it could die on you anytime. That's true. I mean, fish honestly are a terrible investment. Um, I tell anybody, <laughs> don't ever get an aquarium if you're looking to make money off of it because this thing has cost me three times what I thought it would originally. So mm -hmm. uh, it's just, it's been a nightmare, but this is all I really have to show for right now. What kind of Amazon looking fish is that? Oh dude, so that is a rescue. So one thing with having these tanks I really like to do is I like to rescue fish. 
So this came from a woman here in Lexington and this basically got too big for her tank. And so right now it's about, say 20 inches long and eventually it will be moved into the giant 8,000 gallon aquarium to your left there. Um, but it's just, it's gonna grow out. You know, it doesn't need a ton of space right now and it should get at least three feet long. But also it's called the monkey fish. And the reason why that is, is they normally roam the surface of the water. And in the Amazon, the monkeys are in the trees, the birds are in the trees, kind of dangle over the water. And these arowana, the big ones, will come up and actually snatch a monkey out of the tree. And you see we got these lids right here for this? Yeah. These fish will jump out of your tank, no problem. Maybe this thing can jump probably five feet out of the air right now. Right here, the ugliest fish you can possibly find. This is a jelly catfish. This thing will eat anything that will fit inside its mouth. So if you put your finger in there, it's gonna bite you. It's pretty crazy. Do they get bigger, is that it? No, they actually get giant. I have a oh, picture okay. of one and it, it gets like a football. So once it gets about two feet long, they quit growing this way and then it turns out this way. So this is probably my most expensive fish. This is a platinum red tail catfish. Platinum oh. meaning white with black eyes. It's pretty dang cool. Look at him coming to us. They used to be about $2,000. Um, and luckily I had a friend of mine gift this to me. Super nice friend, obviously. And then depending on the grade of the fish, depends on the spots in their back. So the whiter it is, the higher grade it is. Um, this is kind of a B-ish grade fish, I guess. Uh, but these things will get over four feet long. So this is a Amazon river monster. Yeah. I, need, I actually have you here today to not only see these fish, surprise you with something, but also move my electric eel. You think you can help me out? Well, Adam can. So we're going to the eels, electric eels. Yeah, this is the eel layer. Where are these things even like from? This is from South America and they are probably one of the deadliest fish in the world. Nice. A wall outlet, I believe is 120 volts. These guys at an adult size can put up to 600 volts in you. So it could shock your heart and kill you. Um, unlikely to happen, but it could happen, you know? You never know. So, but right here, this is where the big bad eel lies. Wait, the eel? Oh, I thought he was gonna be like as big as me. But oh, no, this is a baby, man. A big, I might get killed if I got one that big. This, this is just guy a little baby. Could this guy still kill you? Probably not. It does hurt. I believe it's probably gonna feel like putting your hand in a wall outlet. Maybe a little worse. But that's like a bad idea, right? Oh yeah, it's a terrible idea. I mean, they, they can kill you. Like it can, I mean, it, it'll make that's you bad. shake. And say you had a, a, a light bulb in here with a wire in the water, you can actually see that light bulb light up from the electric. I mean, it's the craziest thing in the world. You got no, lime in the gloves? Yeah, so I got these on Amazon. When I got this fish, <laughs> This is the worst. All right, guys, just bought the cheapest lime gloves on Amazon. <laughs> We're gonna grab an electric eel. Yeah, this is the worst fish to own because not only can they shock you if you grab them, but if your hand is in the water within six feet, I believe, they can shock you. So it's not like trusty lime gloves. What are they uh, rated for? 660? Oh gosh, I hope a lot. Uh, I have you been know? Shocked. I have no idea. I have no idea. I'm just a fish keeper. I know nothing about electric, electricity, but I actually tried to fly home on a Delta plane with an electric eel and I almost got arrested and detained in the airport trying to bring an electric eel home. Craziest thing ever. Don't ever try it. So yeah. like, would you ever use the lime gloves just grab him or is that a little too? Oh, you wouldn't want to try I never tried it before. Really? If it shocks you though, Some, something happens to me guys. Sometimes those gloves are only rated so much. What if they're not even water? I don't know. Let's try this out. I've never grabbed them before, but that's a great idea. And this is just a baby. I mean, they get up to five feet long, I believe. All right, this is gonna be, this, I'm kind of nervous, dude. You may not want to. 660 is a lot. Yeah, this is a baby, so it's not gonna be as much. Those gloves it's are. like I kind of feel, I don't know, I don't know. No. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Did you feel it? Okay, I don't know, I feel something going on. Look at this thing. This is the weirdest fish you'll ever see. Super slimy, let's see if I can get a pull on this thing. Can't even hold them. Ah! I, I swear, so I, I don't, it, it was pulsating. I, I didn't feel a shock, but it's like, ooh, 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 ooh. Um, I mean, it's it's not like it's electric eel or anything. Yeah, you know what I'm probably gonna, I'm probably gonna sell this fish. Come on, fishy, fishy. Then there what do you go. do with it when you get it in So the that 300 gallon over there, yeah. I'm gonna put him in the 300 gallon. We gotta run, it's gonna be quick. Oh, we're trying to get out, we're trying to get out. Ah. All right, let's do it. I might need some assistance. This is the first time I've ever moved this thing. There we go, there we go. KG on the door. All right, this whole tank is all for him. He's gonna be so happy in here. Come on, little you. Oh yeah, you can see those spots on him, look at that. Dude, this is just crazy. I'm gonna get 
and, and a common misconception is that all eels can shock you, and that is not true. This is the only species of eel that, you know, the electric eel from the Amazon that can shock you. So if you see an eel in the wild or the aquarium, probably not gonna hurt you. So now that we've got the electric eel put away, in here is one of my favorite animals of all time. You gotta be careful not to wake her up. This is a three-banded armadillo. So there's actually over 20 different species of armadillo. It honestly looks like a real-life Pokemon. And this is the only species of armadillo that can curl up in an entire ball. And when it goes tight like that, you cannot pull it open no matter who you are, how strong you are, hide from jaguars and crocodiles that are trying to eat them. So if you look here closely, yeah. see all those little tiny hairs on her? I don't know if you can see that. Once she opens up her shell and comes out, uh, mm -hmm. you'll be able to see a lot. They can sense anything breathing on it from five feet away. So if a jaguar is like still there breathing on it, they'll know to stay in this ball and, and nothing can get to it. He completely harvests, he won't bite them with nothing. All right, guys, we have a, we've been handed an armadillo, and it is looking at me. Oh, look at the claws on that thing. What do you think? I think it's weird looking. Is he warm? Yeah. I breathed on him, and he curled up. Smart. Decide to come out whenever he wants to? Yeah. How so right there, work? he's tight in that little ball. And then once they decide it's safe to come out, it'll come out. I don't know if I flip them over like this. Oh. Yeah. They're really smart. And we woke her up too, so she's like, oh, maybe she's dead. <laughs> oh, there's his ears. Look at that. Such a wicked looking animal. Oh, gosh. Whoa. <laughs> the box on his toenails. Let me love the crocs. Look at that thing. What are they going to do? It's just nervous. It doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> It just woke up. It was there. All right, we're about to get the surprise, but he said to go ahead and get the cooler. So what are you thinking? I mean, what else goes in the cooler? I mean, I don't think it's an armadillo. So well, I think it's something that swims. We're still rattling back here. Yeah, minivan's still rattling, so can't stop it. Can't stop, won't stop. Yes, hopefully, the cooler's big enough. hopefully the cooler's big enough. If it's anything bigger than the cooler, then I don't know, I'll eat all the bass. I'm thinking it's a catfish. I'm thinking it's an albino. You think Because so? in the back, in the, well, I mentioned to him I, I was looking for an albino catfish, but couldn't find one. Mm -hmm. And there just so happens to be an albino catfish sitting at the back of the tank. So, yeah, I think that's a pretty good idea. Yeah. We're going to fight that. Hopefully the cooler's big enough, because that thing was big. It was big. I, that, thing, that thing will easily be the biggest fish in the pond. Yeah. I just don't think it's big enough to eat. No, we're not eating. No, we're not eating an albino catfish. Uh oh, those mannequins scared me. When I first walked in, I was like, "What if the aerator don't work?" I didn't check it before we left. I think they remember they can live in our water for 18 hours. That's what that's what I do. My that's what I did to mine in the river. So we'll see if this is any different. Now moving over here, though, this is pretty much what we're working with right now. Not either. Now that we went ahead and showed Kenji pretty much everything here at the fish warehouse right now. So if you look back here in the back, it kind of blends in with the tank. We've got the big monster swimming over there. Be careful, Kenji, you might eat you. Um, but back here we have an albino channel catfish. And this is going to be perfect for your pond, man. They can handle the cold temps here. They can handle the warm temps in the summer. And he should do great in there. And, it's also going to and that's also going to stick out like a sore thumb. Which is going to be good for whenever it's time to feed them. Oh, dude, it's gonna be perfect. If we can get this guy trained up on feed, oh my god! And gosh. then whenever the feeder goes off, you just see a big, the big white thing. We'll know it's him. And not only that, but this dude's actually already pretty big. Oh yeah, he's about three pounds right now. So he's been, he's probably a few years old. He's instantly gonna be the biggest fish in the pond. Are you serious? Yeah, definitely. We gotta name him. That's gonna be something. Uh, we could call it albino. I keep thinking something's leaking, right. but it's actually just armadillo That's walking around. And the reason why I want to eat you this fish is because with you just having that brand new pond built, you're gonna have the paddle fish in there. I want you to have something else unique. So you might be the only person in the entire United States to have a bino channel catfish and have paddlefish. I don't know anyone else with that kind of combination. That's gonna be the coolest pond in the state. Yeah, as long as it holds water. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know if that one was farmed or randomly caught? Yeah, so this catfish actually, this was farm raised. Okay. Um, it's still pretty rare. It's kind of hard to get your hands on them. Um, a lot of people, but after COVID, um, with the price of everything, there's not a ton of fish farms left. So there isn't a ton of people breeding albino channel catfish. Your armadillo is getting into something over here. What does he do? Uh, he's probably just eating your girl. He is going inside the wall. No, he's doing <laughs> He's just chilling. But so he's, de he's definitely big chilling. Someone actually told me that they can dig through concrete. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but 
Hey, we'll find out later. <laughs> Let's go pull the sign down. <laughs> I think it's so weird looking. Look, it's back there eating it. I mean, there's nothing else like that in the entire world. Like, I think they're um, members of a sloth family, but don't look like no sloth to me. Adam's gonna be turning around, he's gonna be eating his Achilles. <laughs> so unfortunately, with this tank being so big and this fish not really taking up much space, uh, he's got a lot of places to swim. And so the only way to catch these fish out of there is to get in the pond, get your goggles on, get your net, and try to catch them. It's gonna be wild. I got the ladder set up right now. If you get in there, if you go for him for a few minutes and have a hard time, I'll get in. But maybe struggle on purpose. No, don't struggle on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, although this water is 80 degrees, it's pretty chilly when you're first getting in there. Oh, it's 80? It's yeah, good, good. It's like a hot tub. Oh. Yeah, that's not too bad. That's going to be a total of four fish entering the pond. Mm -hmm. That's a lot, especially with one of them being a catfish. First fish that's not in that original first group. No. Uh, with the paddlefish too, but. As y'all know, catfish have really strong, uh, or catfish have really sharp dorsal fins. So if you get a pail by one of this size, I mean, it's like a knife going into you. Alright. Woo! It's a little bit chilly. 80 degrees. Go get that catfish. Holy cow. Okay, so you can show, get us some underwater footage. You got it. I mean, look at my foot compared to this fish. You saying something like the... Oh! Oh my gosh. Dude, I'm... Okay. Did he... What, what are y'all getting here? What'd he do? Dude, it like, freaking freaked the heck out. I think it's so strong. And the glass, this is the craziest thing. The glass actually distorts a fish by about 15 to 20%. So they're actually, you know, 15 to 20% bigger once you're in here with them. And when you're up close to them, it's about two times as big. All right, we wish you luck, brother. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what are you thinking? I don't know. Oh, there's the albino. He's got big lungs. Look. Oh, oh. See how by now do you want me to fill it and try to do it? They're pretty quick. You can just go straight at it and try to get it. Yeah, let's do it. And we'll capture what we can get from the outside. Perfect. He's right here in the thing. Yeah, he's right here, he's right here. They're so fast. Like all these goldfish do. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh! Holy cow. I thought he was going to. Ah! I'm right here. Oh, it's this. Where is No, he's back over here. He's back over here. He's over there behind Big Boy. He's under Shamu. Shamu. Play nice. Oh, dude, I'm sorry. I can hear that. Every tail from the Shamu is so scary. Here we go, right here. Oh, my God. You've almost got it. You've almost got it. Oh, shoot. You would have slipped the mat in the bottom of the earth. It's hard to see because the tank's white in here. Yeah. I can't see the. Uh, oh, my perception's off. Oh, dude, it's so scary. Here we go. This is the big winner right Moment here. Moment of truth, let's get it. We got a corner. And you can see this one's fins are a little bit red. <laughs> oh, there we go, oh. we got it, we got it. All right. 
So unfortunately, when it was hauled from Arkansas, yeah. it got a little bit beat up. You can uh -huh. see its fins there are red. Um, but this thing, I mean, it's, it's pure white, hence the name albino. So albino is basically red eyes with a white body. Yeah, yeah. You can see its face there. <laughs> but it'll heal up just fine the pond. It's just where it's been, where it was moved with all the other fish, they were beating each other up. Yeah. And with it being albino, it shows this stuff a lot more. But on a normal channel catfish, you would never be able to see that stuff. Yeah. So yeah. Fish is caught, that's the hard part. Didn't even have to get wet, easy work. <laughs> oh. Maybe open oh, the door. Uh, you gotta twist that. It's, it's a in the air. Got it. <laughs> bucket, this bucket, that bucket? Yeah. Yeah, we'll take the water right from here, uh, and then it should do just fine. And these guys are a lot harder than the paddlefish, so I don't expect anything to go down. Thing, transfer. Alright, the transfer? The transfer right here. Alright, alright. Okay. You stretch and ready? Or? Right, here we go, ready? I'm gonna hand you this net. Oh, okay. Put them right in there. You can just fine. I don't want to get stabbed. Come on, brother. Man, that's such a cool looking fish. Perfect size! Perfect size igloo! Now, Moment of truth, does it work? Look there. Barely. It's working. Money, dude. That's money, dude. <laughs> now we gotta get this dude home. See, we got it. We'll push this in. Ratchet strap this thing. Look there, son. Look there. Not going anywhere. Probably not. It could, <laughs> but we'll hope it won't. We're taking this mobile to the pond because we got to acclimate these dudes. Make sure they make it to the pond. You the man. All right, boys, we're about to head out of here. 100% honesty, the chances of that thing tipping forward, I'm going to put it right at 80%. But like we've said before, true or not, not sure, but catfish can live 18 hours without water. <laughs> Is that true? No idea. Sounds good though. All right, boys, we've pretty well made it. We've not had any problems up until we're right up against the pond and now we got water splashing out. <laughs> we're going, we're going off-roading right here. As for the pond itself, looking pretty okay. And we just need to walk all the fish out on the pier and then I think we're probably good to go. And starting to get them acclimated. Get them out. All right. I smell something dead. I hope it ain't these. Why catfish? What are your bets? You think he's alive or I, dead? I think he's alive. Oh yeah, he's doing good. I thought he was upside down. <laughs> <Where he's wide. laughs> we can turn the aerator off. I'd say we're probably good. See if you can grab the handle. We'll see if we can carry both. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. This ain't light. No, it's not. It's a lot of water. All right. All right. I think we can do it. I think we can do it. Four fish total. If one of us goes down, all these fish are done for. All right, yeah, I think we're doing all right. These paddle fish, we're going real fast. All right, we can slow down. Oh, we'll set them right up here on this big rock. ASAP, we're gonna get these paddle fish in the water. Right, right here is good. All right, let's get these paddle fish in there. They go on airplanes, so I'd say the answer's probably yes. Oh yeah. They're in there, they're good. We're gonna get straight on into it though. So the way that we gotta acclimate these is we gotta set this bag of water in with the pond water until the temperature, give or take, equals out. So I should be able to just set that bag right there and that'll start acclimating and hopefully the bag won't float away. If that happens, it's bad. But yeah, they'll be doing that. As for the catfish, I know that catfish are probably a lot hardier, but I guess we can acclimate him a little bit too. Let me go ahead and pour out some of this water. Well, yeah. I accidentally pour him out. He slides in the rock. <laughs> he goes in the hole. <laughs> oh. 
I don't think this whole process is going to be as, as important with the catfish. We'll get some of that new water in here. Let him sit for a minute. These catfish are pretty tough, so I don't think we're going to have many. I don't think he's going to have a problem at all. But we'll give him a minute with half his water, half our water. Let him figure it out. But he's a big old boy. He's very alive. I think we're going to name him Albino Catfish. There we go. You ready? I think we might let him go. Yep. We should be able to see him pretty good, too. All right, here we go. We're just going to let him swim right out that hole. Go get it, Albino Catfish. You got it. Get it. There he goes. I lost him. Yeah, I see him. He swam into a rock. See him? Yeah, he's stuck. No, he he went into a rock, but I think he's fine. Yeah, I missed him. Yeah, I think he's good. Albino catfish. We're gonna go ahead and name him. I think we're gonna name him Albino catfish. I'm gonna go ahead and do the fish feeder one time. A little manual feeding while we're waiting on them to acclimate. Oh, son. Let's see. They should, the fish should have already ate today, but we'll see if they come up. Imagine the white catfish just comes up, starts eating. Right away. That'd be crazy. Highly I would, unlikely. I would say we'll see him in a couple of weeks. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and do that. Ready? Come on down. Another bag. All right, ready? I'm gonna see if I can hold one right here, ready? That's what we're working with. Oh, they're so fasty. They're so strong. So strong. How does that look? Good. Like really cool? Eh. The sun's in your face, but. All right, ready? We're gonna let one go. Filter feed it up, buddy. Look at him. That's pretty neat. And he's just going to filter feed his life away. <laughs> going on for number two. Super lively. Look at them things. They're so strong. Their whole body. It looks like a shark. It's so weird. All right. Go filter feed it. Go filter feed, bud. That's so crazy. Last one. Here we go. The water temperature is very similar. Uh oh, he's ready. He's ready. That's a rock. Use that nose. And there he goes. And this water is going to get a whole lot clearer. Right now it's a little dirty. It just rained today. But even like he said, they're used to rivers. So they're used to not being able to see anything. Well, there we go. Four new fish in the pond. Pretty much all of them pretty rare for a pond. Especially that albino. And obviously, especially the paddlefish are kind of weird. I'll take it. Big win for the pond. Boom. If you're new to the pond videos, click right over here to see the time where we actually stock this pond with normal fish. Or right over here for our first time ever fishing this pond and getting an update on size on them. Hey guys, thank you for watching the video. If you haven't already, please go to kendallgrayoutdoors.com. Get you some nice hats. They also got a lot of cool knives there. Thank you for watching. Hashtag Jesus, hashtag Gray Gang. Y'all have a blessed night.